Welcome back to the booth here at Strata New York. I'm joined now by Sloan Barocas, doctoral student at New York University. Thank you so much for being here. Glad to be here. Now, there's a knee-jerk reaction among consumers when they hear the phrase data mining. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the nuance of data mining will come to the fore at some point, or is, or is it always going to be a knee-jerk reaction? It's difficult. Um, so data mining has a pejorative quality, yeah. the term. Um, and in fact, it's often even used. In fact, the, the Time had a piece, kind of cover piece, um, about data mining. Um, and the use of the term was totally inappropriate because it wasn't actually describing the technical process of data money. What it was describing was aggregation, yeah. the fact that companies actually kind of compile fair bit of information. Yeah. Data money almost uh, kind of intuitively, and for most consumers, implies, you know, scavenging through the data, sure. uh, trying to find secrets that you don't necessarily want people to know. Um, it's really difficult to actually explain what data mining is. And I think of data mining in this sense as being a particular form of machine learning. These are complicated things, mm -hmm. very, very complicated. And I, I think a challenge, a real challenge for people both in industry but also regulators and whoever else is interested in these issues is to figure out a way to communicate these highly technical things to a lay audience. Do you think we need a different phrase? So I think what would be important is to maybe try to push back against these misuses of the term. Mm -hmm. uh, um, reappropriate the term data mining, mm -hmm. explain that it's not this kind of data dredging, it's not this case of, you know, uh, running through everyone's data, but instead explain it's a kind of analysis that lets us discover interesting, important mm. new trends. I think, you know, there's an enormous amount of value in data mining and being able to explain precisely what the value is without making it seem like it's just snooping yeah. would be important for everyone and useful. Yeah. Now, sometimes data analysis can go too far or it can uncover too much. How can safeguards be implemented to prevent that? Right, so I actually think this is very tricky. Um, there are a traditional set of principles that people tend to use as a way to navigate some of the problems with data privacy. Um, these are called the fair information practice principles. Um, these are things like notice and consent, uh, right of access, so you're allowed to see what an organization knows about you, um, various things like this. These things are pretty difficult to implement in the case of analytics, data mining, machine learning, because what is actually being done in those cases is discovering something additional yeah. about you that is not explicit in the data that you've handed over. So it really requires, I think, developing new tools to either augment these kind of set of principles, existing principles, or really just think of totally new ways of doing things. Um, and it may not be that transparency um, is, is the way of doing it. So oftentimes, notice, consent, these kind of things are related to transparency. It might mean that companies have to take on board a fair amount of responsibility because it can't communicate to mm. the consumer what is going to happen or what sure. might happen. Interesting. Now, are there common ethical red flags that data scientists should be watching for? Interesting. Um, Sometimes it seems, I mean, increasingly what's really interesting to me is you see these startup companies and um, there's a fair amount about what the company does and there's a lot about the privacy. Because I think it's becoming increasingly clear that some of the, the fundamental aspects of their business involve pretty sensitive information. Sure. Um, thinking of what those red flags might be, I don't know, you know, to be totally honest, there's kind of problems all, there's, there's potential problems all along the line, right? Some of the basic principles that have, have stood up for quite a while was like data minimization, right? This idea that you shouldn't necessarily collect information you don't necessarily need. Yeah. But this is a problem, again, in the context of this kind of work, analytics, because often the organization is trying to discover something in the data that they sure. can't anticipate. You don't know what you don't need, right? I think, though, that there are um, the rule of thumb. If this kind of thing, if your practice was made public, widely public, mm. would you be a mm. nervous? Right? I think this is like a pretty simple rule of thumb. And in fact, a lot of people tend to be pretty squeamish about the stuff they do because they know that perhaps presented in the wrong way, yeah. it would make the company look right. not great. Um, so, you know, I, I don't, this is not the, it's not a very sophisticated rule, but I do think that um, as a way to think through what you might be doing, um, consider this. And increasingly, that does seem to be what's happening. Yeah. It's a moving target, too, right? This I mean, the whole notion of privacy is changing as well. Yes. And so, last question for you. Do you think that data mining should be an opt-in process all the time, or is that just going to squelch innovation? I guess it's a difficult question. Um, there are certain contexts for certain uses of the data where it might seem um, appropriate to have opt-out. There also seems others where opt-in seems sensible. Um, this debate is kind of most fierce in the context of online advertising, sure. um, because that's where the, the value of being able to track on an opt-out basis uh, is most obvious. Um, I have my own position. Uh, I feel um, uncomfortable with the opt-out approach. 
uh, in certain contexts, often because consumers are just wholly ignorant of the fact that yeah. these things are going on. Um, but I'm not sure if opt-in, opt-out is necessarily the only way to solve the problem. Um, and so I think talking about some of the other things we mentioned earlier, you know, what are the other mechanisms we might introduce to increase awareness, mm -hmm. uh, make companies internally more responsible. These to me seem like a kind of a more promising approach than opt-in, opt-out. And I don't want to kind of succumb to the idea that um, being forced to decide between these two alternatives uh, puts the kind of solvency of all these budding companies at risk. Right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Really thanks appreciate very much. It.